dentshow.org, right? And so this is the um, digital site that's um, dedicated to uh, the stories and the history of those that were unjustly incarcerated in the U.S. right the, it, after World War II, just because it was brought up and um, it's not one of the sites that I showcase, but they're out there, right? These digital projects are out there. Um, and so I think it's important just to, right, when they come up to point you guys in the right direction. Um, I don't know what this is. Um, know if it's Omeka or Drupal, but um, but the digital archives you'll see. Let's see. I'm gonna learn that. Uh huh. The digital repository, right? And so you'll see these kind of local stories there, right? Okay. If they go yeah. to Fort Stanton and check. Uh, website. There's a lot of information on the Japanese interpreter here. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, um, okay, I just thought it was. I just, I mentioned that there was a site, so I wanted to make sure that I provided it before I forgot. So now we're turning to um, the platform, right? So we kind of saw these some neat digital exhibits talked critically about how they can function, um, and I kind of said, oh, it's one and the same, right? The technology and the practice come hand in hand, <laughs> and so that's what we're doing now. So, um, want to tell them where to go? Sure. So I'm just going to do, we're going to do a little housekeeping. We're on page five, pages five through nine of the handbook. If you have it downloaded, if you don't, that's okay. We're going to cover everything. Um, here's what page five looks like and I just want to point out there's a contact address in here for the Manitos project if you are not here later and having trouble there's a link in the handbook there's also a link to the documentation for Omeka S and that may or may not help you some of it is very accessible and some of it's very technical so it's going to depend on what your question is, whether the documentation is going to be helpful to you. But it's there in the workbook, and it's a live link if you have the digital version of the workbook. So accounts. Um, Fred made accounts. Well, Fred and I made accounts for everybody who signed up. A lot of people have had the confirmation email go to their junk folder. So if you haven't gotten it, that's one reason why. Another person had theirs take a really long time to get delivered. And that's going to depend on your uh, mail provider and your ISP or the Wi-Fi here or, right, there's a lot of variables. So if you can access your account, if you've been able to confirm it by clicking the link in the email, that's great. If you haven't, again, we're going to go through everything on the screen so you're not going to be missing out. And we can do some more technical troubleshooting later to find the problem if people haven't gotten their account. Okay? Cool? Yay? Okay. Yay. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, the, this is the URL to go to, nmdigitalheritage.org slash login. And if you don't put the slash and the login, you're going to go to the front page, which looks like this. nmdigitalheritage.org slash login. If we make it to the Buffalo, we did it right. <coughs> no. no. Okay. If you're at the Buffalo, so take out right. all of this stuff right. so and put a slash and, and a login. Slash and login. Make it bigger? Yeah. That's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, okay. so, ah, that's a great idea. Do you want to, so just click here. And then it's the so it's 
So I'm going to switch back because I want to talk about um, best practices for a minute, kind of in general. Can everybody see this, or should I make it bigger? Bigger. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, in general, if you know the information about the item that the field is asking for, fill it in. If you don't, leave it blank. Okay. Don't put unknown because it's probably not unknown, right? You just don't know. <laughs> but somebody in the world knows who's in this picture or when it was taken or, right? So you're sort of misleading if you do that. Same thing with question marks, right? Just, if you don't know, just leave it blank. The only, the only field that I'm gonna show you today that's required is a title. <coughs> so we also wanna spell out all of our words. Um, I don't know if the rest of you have had the experience of going somewhere or looking at something and having it be a bunch of abbreviations and you're like, wait, what? Because abbreviations aren't always standardized and they can mean different things and we want this to be really accessible so people can come and learn about these items and understand the stories. Um, spell check, if you can, right? So maybe write your description in Microsoft Word or another app that has a spell checker make sure that you're spelling your words correctly. Um, <clears throat> and write simply, and this goes to accessibility that we're going to talk about a little bit tomorrow, but um, we don't want to use a lot of really complicated words that a lot of people won't be able to understand. It's like off-putting and then they can't participate. <clears throat> yes? Amy, what about accents, especially in Spanish? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, I have not tried it in this platform yeah but yeah you know we can do it you know we can do it and I think that's a really really good uh, question and I just want to say a little bit about that too because um, one of the first projects that I got here at UNM and through this postdoctoral fellow was create you know working on an Omeka exhibit for uh, the family papers of an artist by the name of Julio Galan who was in um, and from Monterrey, Mexico, right? And so um, the metadata was already created, right? All of these fields. Um, and so I was going to upload them into the neat fields, and I kept getting this error, and it wasn't doing it, and, it, and, and they weren't going in, and we're like, what's happening? And so then I had to go and ask Amy, and um, through some trial and error, we figured out that Sometimes these flat platforms don't even like our languages, right? Like it doesn't, it, you know, so what, so eventually it took it, but you had to put an HTML code, right? Okay. Every single time you had an accent, an Enya, and so, I mean, there's bypass and there's a way to do it, but I do think it is telling about the other steps we have to go to just to get the language into these platforms, right? That that you don't think if, you know, when they say, oh, it needs a Unicode or it needs Monoly, it's like, well, right, who knew that just, and, and if you don't know that, luckily I had Amy to kind of talk me through, it, I kept getting these errors, these error codes. Um, and so it really highlights another layer of literacy that's needed, right? So even if you get this, as soon as you plug in, you know, languages that differ, there's another layer that you have to go through. So that is a really good question. I don't know Omeka S, um, but if there's ways around it. But um, but you couldn't import text from like Word into it? Well, you would have to change. We'll test it. We'll, we'll test, test it. it. Oh, today. perfect. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It, that's a big one. It's really important. So, um, will someone make a note to remind me? Then we'll do that later. Okay. Great. So, I don't know why the screen is not working. Excellent. I live in this okay. room a lot. Yeah, she does. She does. Okay, so the title is, you got to have a title, right? And sometimes, so, so I was sitting over there listening to Margie, and one of the things that occurred to me was, like, like I want to empower you, right? because this can feel like really scary 
to some people and kind of off-putting and like, oh, I don't know what to put. Like, you're the expert. This is your item. You know what this is. Take the power, right? Make up a title. It's okay, right? You know. So, you're going to make a title. That's pretty clear. Does anyone have questions about that one? Okay. Creator. Right? Straightforward. Question? If it's an image, mm -hmm. and you, like from two generations ago, you don't know who took the picture, so right. you leave it blank? So what, yep, that's what you do if you don't know. Okay. Yeah. And if it's a more current picture, do you put in the person who snapped the pic? Generally, so for a photograph, the creator is going to be the photographer. Okay. Okay? If it's a book, it's going to be the author. Question? If you have like a pretty good idea of who took it, but you're not 100% sure. Take the power. You decide. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. That's yeah. what we all do, right, Portia? You decide. You got it. That someone gave you that, or you you have it by the virtue of who you are. You got to own it. Is there yes. Is there, no, go ahead. Is there a way, though, that you would put like probably? Or nope. Okay. <laughs> because if it's wrong and you find out later that you're wrong, you go back and change it. That's the beauty of digital, right? It's never done. You can always fix it. So you're not you're not carving into a stone tablet, right? Okay. Who else had it? I did, but she just asked. It. Okay. Yeah. You could put in the description, right? Probably take it by so and so. Absolutely. And then that would flag it to anybody that oh, I know who took it. Right. And somebody might come back, right, and say. You're wrong. <laughs> and you're going to be like, okay, sorry. And you're going to fix it. Believe me, I do that all day long. <laughs> all right, subject. This one, this is a this is a thorny one. And Mark is going to talk later about some of the problems with what are called controlled vocabularies, which are numerous. Um, however, I'm recommending that you still use the Library of Congress subject headings in this field. Good. Because, <laughs> thank you, because a lot of times that's what people search for, right? And what this is really about is helping people who want to find this item find it. And one of the ways we do that is we decide what things are called, and then we always call them that. Or we decide how we spell something, and then we always spell it that way so that when people are searching, they can find those things. It's like a hashtag on Twitter, right? If you have a ha the same hashtag spelled three different ways, it's going to be hard for people to find the tweets that refer to, does anyone, does anyone know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> just getting some blank stares, I'm like, okay, maybe that's not a good example. But that's another example of a controlled vocabulary, right? People have agreed that we're going to tweet hashtag me too, and that's going to be tweets about <coughs> sexual assault, right? Um, so, we have installed a plugin for the subject field, which is called the Value Suggest plugin. And when you start typing in the field, and it's going to take a minute, um, but a list will pop up of Library of Congress subject headings that relate to what you typed in. And some of them are going to be relevant to what you're talking about, and some of them are going to be really wrong guesses, right? It's just guessing. But it's helping you find a subject heading that it thinks might be related to what you're trying to, how you're trying to code your item. Is that clear? Great. Okay. Can you see the example? Um, Plants? Right, so I typed in plants and I get all of these different options. And again, some of them might like psychotropic plants, that might not be anything like what I, you know, right? I might be wanting to talk about motion of fluids in, right? So it's just, it's helping you. Yes. Do you just put it for one tag or can you put more than one? You can absolutely put more than one. That's a great question. So I'm going to select plants, and it puts a link to the heading 
in the Library of Congress's taxonomy, right, list of topics. Okay, so that's, so, so I've decided that the general heading of plants is for this item. This, I'm just making this up. This is We're in Omeka. Yep. yep. So let's say we want to add another subject heading, right? Because it's about plants, but it's also about bees. So we're going to click Add Value, and that just gives us another field exactly like that. And I'm going to type in bees, and here we go, right? A whole host of like weird stuff that might apply and it might not. Fossil bees. And you can do that multiple times. It's, it's, I would say less is more with subjects, okay? Because you could go on forever, right, probably, depending on how complicated your item is. I would say two or three. Yes? This is probably for later, but I was just curious, this is like to ask it. So as this project starts to develop a very specific Manita uh, plugin or database, does this start to build it automatically based on the previous usage? Um, this or particular plugin does not. Okay. This pulls from controlled vocabularies. Okay. Right? It does not go into the rest of your database and find other people that have uploaded items about cows. So this will be something that a group will probably want to start to work like exactly. yeah. to start to build that. Exactly. But I know that's yes. later, so yeah. forget I uh, No, it's a good question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so are we good on the subject? So description, like, go crazy. Go crazy. This is your chance to put in all of the stuff that you know, or even that you think you know, right? This was probably taken by such and so and so in 1925, and we think these people are, right? And I'm, I'm not saying hedge, right? If you know that that's Uncle Bob, then put that, right? Ownership. I'm just saying, in this, in this field, you don't need to be as sure, right? Yes? I would like to suggest that you put in relationships, like Uncle Bob, last name included, born such and such time, uh, brother to... Wonderful. if you just have the name, it, it could get lost in the shuffle. So that's a, that's a great suggestion for kind of the project as a whole. Again, like what Shane was saying, to come up with some guidelines for you all about how you, as this community, does things, right? I'm just, I'm telling you how you and I does it. Yes? Um, because when people start searching on the website, will the description be searchable? All of the fields are searchable, yes, yes. And also through Google, I should say. So it's not, they don't have to actually come to the site to find your items, right? They might find it in a Google search. Yes? Um, I brought mine up, and mine only has title and description. It doesn't have the creator and Did you select the resource image. template of still image at the so top? The first thing oh, so you have to fill it yeah. in. So you yes. Do it okay. So you can fill it. So just well, I don't want to like screw something up. You won't. You won't. All right. Okay. So still image. Description, more and questions or comments okay, or that. thoughts or anything okay. about that. Is it limited to number of characters? I don't know. That's a really good question. But it, whatever the limit is, it's pretty high. So try to hit it. <laughs> yes? I, I was thinking in terms of like artifacts and collections. And mm -hmm. so like um, people will bring into the library certain things that want digitized. OK. And so I guess maybe creator could be the owner. Um, no, no, that no. will come up later. Come yeah. Up. yeah, so the creator is really the person who made the thing, or the author, or the photographer, or, right? Did I? I didn't give really any example in here, but it could also be an organization, right? Like organizations publish annual reports, right? So UNM, University of New Mexico, is a creator for the stuff that they produce, which isn't as interesting as the stuff you have. <laughs> But still, so okay. So type is another thorny one. This is this is another controlled vocabulary, right? There's a set of things that are a type that are types, and um, I tried to cover that 
in the workbook, which I thought we were looking at. Okay, so here's type. Can everybody see this? Is it anything bigger? So these are not the only types, but I picked these as the ones that you're most likely to encounter. So text, right? Uh, yell out some examples of what would be text. A report? Report. Perfect. All that stuff. Books, documents, any kind of document, right? If it has writing. Uh, still image, what's that? A photo, right? Um, what's a moving image? Video. Video. Sound. Right. Physical object. Right. Maybe it's a 3D photograph of a piece of pottery or a, a, a weaving or. So do you do pictures or physical object? It's a photograph. Okay. So this is what we talked about yesterday, right? A digital image is a digital representation of the thing. When we're talking oh. about this, we're talking about the thing. Not the image of it. Okay? Does that, does that make sense? It's kind of a weird so the, abstraction. So, okay. the, so the class, did you just describe the difference between a class and a type? No, this is type. Okay, what's the difference between a type and a class? Because the class has a lot of those same Class things. is probably, I think in here, they're using, yeah, so these are, these are the types. They're okay. just calling it a different name. Okay, so right. it's, it's kind so of the same So you can see there's category. others. There's a data set. There's okay. event. What's a data set? Um, so, Margie, what's a data set? <laughs> so a data set is, um, I think it's, it's data that has been compiled and formulated in such a way so that people can go back and look at it, right? So I'm thinking specifically, maybe even so, um, so I'm going to bring... And you can speak to it too. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll so, and yet she persisted. Is a UNM Omeka project that Amy is one of the. Con Do you say author? Right. <laughs> I'm here. I'm a creator of this. And so, um, what it aims to do is kind of recover. Um, women's voices of, of New Mexico, right? Faculty, students, um, and so to, so you, in order to get that information, they had to create a data set, right? right. So you want to talk. So I can, I'll just show it to you. Yeah. It's, I should say, I hope I'll be able to show it to you yeah. <laughs> with the technical <laughs> issues in this room, but here we go. Okay, so this is what a data set looks like. What I did was I went to the PDFs of the course catalog where they wrote a list of every person who graduated from UNM starting like, I don't know, I think I have it back to 1890 something in here. And, and I scanned them and I used text recognition, we talked about that yesterday, to pull out the names and this other information, not a lot of information, really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, right? Um, and then we were able to make a chart, which is kind of interesting, of, here, can I make it bigger? Of how um, the graduation rate varied for the sexes at UNM over the early uh, 20th century, right? So you can see that up until 1945-ish, it was fairly close, right? Almost as many women as men. I mean, not many people at all, right, early on. But it kind of grew the two lines. Can everybody see what I'm talking about? And then, boom, what happened in the, the mid-1940s? She had a bill. Exactly. So there's a graphical representation of the effect of the, the graduation rates by sex of the GI Bill. Could I ask, does this, is this automatic that you said in that phase of Oh, 
You mean you want to give back to OMEC? Sure. You do that. <laughs> but anyways, I'm sorry. I love this stuff. You I talked love this about project. data sets, right? And so, and so that is important for researchers because even if Amy didn't want to do that, the fact that she coded this and created this um, gives other researchers this like primary sources really to go in and then make another argument. So one of our archivists here, Samuel Cisneros, I think he did something with this data set in the sense that he took their data set and then went a step further and tried to see how many had Spanish last names yep. so that he could take this now and see how many right Hispanics and Chicanos were graduating. So that's why this data set is important because even if, it, if I don't want to do it, the fact that I compiled it means that researchers can maybe draw something else from there and that's why data sets are important. Yeah. Okay. Can you share that data set or how do we get to it? It's freely downloadable, yep, yep. <coughs> okay, so, um, I don't believe that this is automatically saving, to get back to your question. Okay. Okay, because what happens when we go and click add up at the top, is it's going to take us to another screen. <coughs> so, which is not a huge deal, if you're worried, you can always click add and then go back in and edit, which means you're not really editing, you're adding more, because you didn't finish. But um, no, I would not assume that it's automatically saving. Great question. And somebody else had said, um, oh, the class question, right? And that is confusing. And this is something um, that I set up kind of, I, I didn't have a lot of guidance, I guess, on what we would need for this project because we're just starting. So I chose to talk about still images today because I think that's a pretty common um, item that a lot of people are going to have, but what would really need to happen is that there would need to be a resource template for all of the different kinds of items, right? Because you might want different fields if you're going to throw up a video or a, an oral history, okay? And again, that's another question that goes back to kind of the project protocol, which isn't really my place to, to decide that, okay? That, anyway, does that, is, is that clear? Uh, kind of, sort of? Okay. Hopefully, so my point is hopefully when you come in here, like when you're at home and you're going to try to add your own items, you will have resource templates for different types of items because the project will have decided that you need them. However, they might decide to categorize it some other way. So we can add, say, a photograph from our family collection, mm -hmm. and it joins the larger money those projects. Right, that's what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so, so we left so off that description. What question? Well, so if you've only got those three to choose yeah. from, and they don't add any more, and you had something to upload, should you just put it under base resource? I think base resource. So if I'm going to scare one you. Of the other I'm going to scare you a lot. Look at this. Look at these. The top ones are kind of cool, but oh, you get wow. down here. And they start looking really weird and scary, and you're like, what does that mean? What does replaces mean? So what I try to do is simplify it. We're not going to okay. go into all this today. It's, it's way too much. That's why still image <laughs> is limited in terms of what fields are there. And all those fields are described right in the handbook. And, then, yeah, and I put sort of human language descriptions here versus the descriptions that really come out of the, the entity that created yes. this scheme, right, that are super horrible and vague and you don't know what they're talking about. So I think it's important also just to note that Amy did go that extra step to kind of explain what goes in each field and ways that we would understand, right, because this is technical language, right, that, um, that is saying the same thing, but I think this is a really nice way to get us thinking, okay, what's the creator, oh, the person who named the item as opposed to Right, all of these other languages. Right, that, right. Talked about all these different levels of literacy. <laughs> right, right. right. Um, needed for this. So, right. Yeah. Amy, I yes. Have a question, and like you kind of addressed it yes. a little bit yesterday. So for scanning and photos from A through Z in terms of categories. Yep. So I'm a little bit anal, so on Photoshop. <laughs> so At I least have you can folders own it. by either flowers or area, what do we do with families? So we have pictures 
all of these individuals, do we create folders or, or because it's searchable, people will be able to search by a person's name? So are you asking about in Omeka or are you asking on your own personal Omeka. system? So, so the way that we collect things in Omeka is we create collections, right? And so that will allow the project to decide we need a collection that shows, um, help me out here. Yeah. So, and I think, so yeah, I mean, I'll help you out. <laughs> Thank I think, you. Right? And so I think, um, and maybe we can even um, have these conversations now, maybe as we're looking at this template. And so, um, remember I mentioned earlier that this is community driven, right? We're making those decisions. So at some point, um, it is going to be this kind of community decision of um, what are the different collections within this Manitos project, right? Is there something that's looking at family, geography, math? Um, and sometimes, I think maybe you're ahead of the curve, but sometimes those things reveal themselves as you're digitizing, right? And it kind of comes naturally, but I don't, I mean, I think it just depends on the kinds of materials that people are digitizing. Carmen, and then I'll hand it over to Shane, because I'm sure Shane knows a lot well, more about this. For subject, I put in Chicago activist, and there was no drop down. And then I put in social justice activist, and, and, and so we're going to talk about that this afternoon, right? So, so th this is category. that could be a category, right? And at some point, do we, as a community, want to make do we want to make a new vocabulary list, right? And and, and we'll get to that th after lunch, definitely, because um, Library of Congress is the standard; it's what's used, but it's definitely problematic, especially if we start thinking about these communities that aren't represented. Right, and so I think we'll talk about. I mean, I'm not solving the problem, <laughs> but I think, but I think we do have to at least interrogate it and talk about it. Yeah, Shane. Do you? Oh, well, I was going to ask a brief question, which might address, I think, what John is yeah. worried about, which is, so an item can be in multiple collections. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so in some ways, you don't have to decide if, for following no. like on your example, right. if someone belongs to three different families, uh -huh. they can. It won't change the item. The right. item will be the item. It'll just reside in those collections as an organizing principle, and you don't have to pick and choose. Right. Can, that, yeah. that same entry can belong yes. to 50 right. different collections. Yes. That's but a you'll be able to organize it very easily. That's but, a great answer. But it's yeah. totally true that, I mean, and it's one of the unique things about this project is going to be that it's community driven from the ground up. It's mm -hmm. going to be messy, and there's going to be a lot of deciding and discussion. You know, it's easy for the Library of Congress to decide it because they're kind of looking at it more pyramidical and they just make decisions based on their experience or their decisions. We're doing it the other way, so there will need to be a lot of work done in that. And so that's, that'll be an interesting and challenging part of the project, is how we all decide as a community or multiple communities what these, these fields are. Right, so, so a lot of the questions out. that you're going to have I'm certainly not going to be able to answer, and we may have not even, probably haven't even made those decisions yet. So we're just, we're at the beginning. Yes. So basically we're supposed to put in individual item into this. That's what we're doing now. And then so with the items. hashtags, maybe we can have. Let's, we're not even going to go there yeah, yet. Yeah, but what, I, what I'm thinking is when you're putting a hashtag in, make it so that we have common hashtags. So that then when you start to divide it up, you can easily grab well, all these the items in there. Hashtag, the hashtags was an example of controlled vocabulary, right? right? So, that we're, so that the Library of Congress works because they have one term, and this is what they use for like certain subjects. Um, and I and that's so that when saying, you go to the library and you want to find a book on plants, right. you can find it. If we didn't have that, we, we would, how would we know where to go to find And so as Carmen just said, so what were the two things you put in? Um, I put Chicano activists okay, yeah. right. and so, social justice. So activists. social justice and Chicano activists, right? right? So as a researcher, and I'm going in looking for Chicano activists, and I just put in Chicano activists, but I lose but someone who was using social justice didn't include the Chicano active. I'm going to lose all of that stuff, right? So, but the, can I also just say we have Chicano movement, right? So yes. let's let's put in one word to start with and see what yeah. we get because yeah. we might find a category 
where our thing will fit. We're just using a different And, and so form. these projects, right, as I kind of mentioned earlier, they're collaborative. So these yeah. questions are really good questions to get Excellent us thinking questions. about the vocabularies. Is there, you know, something we want to, the community of this project thinks is important to put in there, right? What are the terms that the communities are looking for? What kind of vocabulary are they using? And we'll talk about that this afternoon, but... And then but, we can get more standardization on those things. Well, so that, it, so it that depends on to us, right? The project, how standard so can do you want to? But so that you can pull them in, so yes. that you're not yeah. using them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so I think the solution, solution is to add uh, subjects, right? So that you add a value and you separate out the terms that you're using. So if you put in Chicano for one term, you put in social justice for a second value, you put in yes. women for a third value. And that's the way that yes. that you can drill down. It's not putting them, it's sort of back to yes. that original example of not putting everything build. into one right. place, exactly. but creating separate entries for exactly. each of those things. And so that let, me, way, let me demonstrate that, right? Yeah. So here we're back at the subject. I'm just going to put one word in. Okay, one word. I'm not going to put like yeah, Chicano activist in 1954. It's one, it's one word and see what I get. And is there something here that will work for what I want? If it doesn't, then we'll put something else. Right? And see what I get. Is there something there that will work? Okay, so again, not because we love the Library of Congress, but because they've made some decisions about how to, about what to call things to help people find them. And that can be really wrong, right? They've made some really wrong decisions about what to call things. And I'm not going to stand up here and say they haven't. But that's what we have. <clears throat> Mark is going to talk a lot more about that later. Yes? Another aspect is for, for those that are going to be using these collections, they might be using perhaps an online guide saying, here's how you go about finding the things that you're looking for. That's a great idea. And those, for people that aren't into this like we are, they, you know, they may only have those controlled vocabularies and what that does, it, it makes it easier for them to be able to find it yep. without being a specialist, or right. without, without having special right. kind of right. knowledge. So this is a whole, right? Subject is only one field. It's only one way for people to find things. So let's not get too focused on trying to make the subject perfect because it's never going to be because the Library of Congress is the Library of Congress. Right, exactly. So, yes? Is there a way, like I found a better link, um, is there a way to, and I cut and paste it, so if I can't make it as a link unless it's on the Library of Congress, is that what you're saying? Um, so, so, the way that this works, this particular field, it's called the, we're using the value suggest plugin, which connects that field to that controlled vocabulary. So no, in this subject, you're not gonna be able to do anything different. Okay. I mean, you can type in your own thing, but it might not ever be anything that someone searches for as a subject, right? Okay. Does the title do anything in terms of the search functionality? All of the fields are gonna be searched. No, I yeah. mean, when you said you have to give a title of the UI, then. Sure. Does it do anything? Well, when people are searching, does the title? All of the fields will be searched. So whatever you put oh, see, in see, any field, okay. if someone searches for that word or that phrase, it'll come up. With the caveats about search engine preferences and algorithms and all that kind of stuff that we're not going to talk about. So, did we leave off on type? Right, and type is that control value. Oh, that's where we went. We went to the data set, and then <laughs> okay. So in in the description over here, and the same the same ones in the handbook, I picked a few that are the most likely ones that you're gonna use. Right? There's also software. There's event. I think there's service. Books. Some really weird ones. So what is a book? Text. Book. Exactly. So you have to use text. That's Anything book. that's a written document. Okay, so let's talk about dates because this isn't going to be hard at all, <laughs> right? <laughs> so there's a lot of date fields. I chose two. I chose date created, which is the date that the item was created. Okay, so if it's a photograph, which is kind of what we're talking about here, it's the date the photograph was taken. 
you might not know. What are you going to do if you don't know? Thank you. Excellent. Um, I also chose date modified. And that seems like it might not be that applicable for a photo, but one thing you can use this for is the date that it was scanned, right? Which might or might not be important. Um, what else could be the date modified? And think outside of the photograph box right now. Think about other objects. What is what? What might be important about an object's modification? Yes. I guess maybe if it was an object that, like an archaeological <coughs> artifact that has gone through conservation or restoration. Okay. Or like that. That's a good example. <coughs> Some date that it might be published. Okay. Sure. Adding information, so like uh, family histories of a Bible. Exactly. Exactly. Right. The, the first person to start recording that in our family Bible was my great grandma, and she started on this date. But then my mom added this information later. Exactly. Okay. There's again, there's other date fields, and as you go along, as you go along this process, you might realize that you want some of them, and that's another piece of the discussion that the project's going to need to have about their protocol. Yes. Um, just a few question on date modified. Can you put like that explanation that you're mentioning? Or is um, it just for a date? I wouldn't recommend putting dates in this field. I think it will let you put text in there. The trouble is, is that, um, and maybe this doesn't matter. Again, this is this is a protocol question. But as a person who moves items around from system to system, if I want to sort them by date and there's text in there, I can't do it. So that's my recommendation. Um, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, can you put like a date range in there? You can put a date range. And I talked about that right here. And that's especially important like for a painting. I took a class in the spring and I got to do a project on Georgia O'Keeffe. And she painted like over, right? It took her years to do a painting. So for something like that, also, I mean, that could be if you know it was sometime in that period, but you're not sure of the exact year. You can use it a year range. Sarah, did you have a question? Okay. Yes. How would you put something um, like where the original was made at this time, but then they did a 3D image of the thing so you and created me, it a second time? You tell me. What did we just talk about? It seems like it would be created in the first one, but Technically, what you're looking at is a reproduction because the first one's gone. So, so the date created would be the date it was created, and then the modification could be the date it was made digital. Okay. Right. Well, no, this isn't a digital. This is actually a 3D model. Okay. Then the date that the model was created would be the date created. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about rights. This is this is huge. This is huge and complicated for librarians and archivists. And then when you bring in, I think, the community piece, you have another whole layer of thorns around the issue, right? Um, we're going to talk some about copyright tomorrow, so I'm not going to go too much into that today. We'll have time tomorrow to talk about issues about law and rights. Um, and I'm going to provide some resources. They're also in the handbook under the rights field. There's a link to both the rights statement quick reference, which I'm going to give you tomorrow on paper, and rightsstatements.org, which can help you figure out what statement about the rights to this item you want to put in there. But I know there's going to be a zillion questions, so I'm just going to stop talking. What questions? None? That's crazy. Uh huh, I knew it. Go ahead. So, could you give us maybe an example of something you might put in? Sure. Um, Portia, what's the CSWR one? Do you uh, know it off the top of your head? It's just it's the standard, um, I think, what do we say? Uh, it's something like the collection is open, open for, for research, research and educational and use. Users and the digital for copyright right. compliance. 
and rights to the digital resource are held by the University of New Mexico, which just means because we scanned it, we have the rights to the electronic version and we're not giving those away, but we don't have rights to the whatever the thing that was that was scanned. So that's an example of how we do it. Wow, okay, that was easy. <laughs> oh, I knew I'd go back to books. It, okay. It doesn't do books like in the Library of Congress number, I is has been numbered that doesn't um, move because that just does the whole book. It oh, the whole oh, book like are you a cataloger? Yes. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> yes. Um, we can cr probably create a field where we can put the ISBN if you thought that was important, but it's not going to pull in the whole all the cataloging. Oh. Yeah, no, this is okay. Yeah, different different thing. <clears throat> Okay, so format. Again, this, I really hate this field. Let me be honest, it's so confusing. So this is, again, this is my interpretation, and I'm sure other people are gonna disagree with me about what you put in format. But what I put in format is extra information from the type, right? So if, if your type is text, and you're going to want to you're going to want so much to put in book right or painting or whatever don't do it put text put still image whatever and then when you get to format that's where you get to put that other stuff okay you can put if it's a if your item's a still image let's say um and then it's a Georgia O'Keeffe painting i'm sorry i love her um you're going to say oil on canvas uh, 24 by 36, and that's probably enough. That's the format of that item. If it's a pot, it's going to be pottery or clay, right? So it helps you flesh out that type, which feels really way too vague, right? Yes? So if we're talking about still photos in your example, mm -hmm. um, so all that information from your camera, the technical metadata, uh, size of the image, and all that stuff, where where it's taken, what camera was used, is this where you put it, or is there a separate field? You definitely can. You can. There's also a field called digitization something something, which I did not include here. Okay. And so sometimes people separate out because we don't want to necessarily confuse the format of the physical thing, right? with the format of the scan of the physical thing, right? Because that's going to be a JPEG or whatever. This is text, right? So that's a protocol question. Okay. Again, um, this is how I use format here, right? I put in, if it's a if it's a five by seven photograph, then I put photograph five by seven in the format and the type would be still image. Yes? So if you have a pot and a <laughs> Those are two different entries. No. Well, <laughs> that's a great question. So did you take the picture of the pot so you could put it here? Then they're not. They're the same. I mean, they're, they're one item. Because you, what you're really putting in here, the item is really the pot. But you can't put the pot in the digital archive. So you need a picture of it first. So that's what you're going to attach. Does that make sense? So you need a separate database for inventory physical items. Yeah. No, Are, do you work in a museum? Yeah. No. Well, okay. I'm a member of the historical society and I'm working for the land grant organization. And what if you want to document that there's a uh, an axe head in somebody's house in their fireplace that's been cemented in there, and then you take a picture of yeah. it. Yeah. So then you just say. So the, to the item. The item record that you're creating here is that thing in the fireplace. You just took a picture of it so you could show it to people. Versus a photograph that your grandma took of your seventh birthday party. That's the item. It's the photo. You can touch it. Okay. Right? But you scanned it again so you can put it in here. Yeah? <laughs> okay. The reason, yeah, and the reason why we have to make this distinction is because there are things that we call born digital, right? If you create, if you write a book in a Word document, there never was a physical object of that book unless you print it out. But I mean, 
That's a digital object. So in that case, your format would be what Sean was talking about, the file, a set, the file type, right? It's a Microsoft Word document, how many characters it has in it. That's why we need to separate in our heads what's the object and what's the representation. Because sometimes they're the same thing, but sometimes they're not. Did you want to add to that? I was that? just going to say that maybe help clarify on that as well. Like That picture that you're taking simply to put it in is like, that's almost like invisible, like it's just that thing that you're referencing because you really want to talk about the pot. But you might want to make a separate photo fill. Say there's the pot, and then at some point, uh, I don't know, you know, Lee Miller or a famous photographer took a picture of that pot back in 1942. In that case, that photo would be a separate entry because it's a, a, an artifact that you're also wanting to include. So that's kind of the distinction between your your picture and one that you might actually make a separate entry for, for the pot. Exactly. And if he took it in 1942, it wasn't for digital, right? That was a physical photo that you could touch because that's all the only way they could do it. Okay? So, in the yes. method, then you don't use it for the artifacts, the actual artifacts, to kind of, as a. So, so, generally speaking, what we're doing here is it's we're creating a record for a physical object, right? Something that's printed on paper or a pot or something like that, in general. Okay? So, like Sean said, the picture that we took or the scan that we made, it's like a portal. Right? It's like a window. So we can see the object because it's on the internet. So we don't care too much about that. The times we care about images are when they were from a print. And we scan them. With me? Yes. Also, would you just do a different class then? Physical object versus... Um, still image if you're just talking about like the pot? Exactly, so, exactly. So the class would be um, physical object or it would be data set or whatever, right? Okay. So there's murmuring. Can I clarify more? Can I get someone else to offer an explanation? Okay. Language. This should be easy. What's the language of a photograph?
Okay. But if you know it's never going to be relevant to your object, then you can take it out. And I think that Great, is something that's really fascinating about these community projects and about everybody having their own login sites to this Omeka app is that it doesn't preclude the fact of somebody else coming along and saying like, oh, I know exactly when that was and I'm going to put in the date even if you left it blank, right? I think that's part of the, the power of this kind of platform for this community building project. Thank you. Yeah, so I think, Amy, I kind of, so it maybe is we're, over maybe at Contributor, done. right? Yay. Maybe, but we okay. can still facilitate some questions. In the um, I was just wondering if, um, if anybody in the community can get on and change it, is there some way to safeguard it that it's still safe in case somebody gets in there and just puts a bunch yeah, of garbage Yeah, that in? I don't, I don't think so. So I think everyone who has a user account can access all of the items in Manitos. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that means deleting items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking you should somehow have a backup for it for sensitive reasons. I'm, I'm sure they, Fred might be able to know tomorrow if there's yeah. some kind of way of version control of backups. like going back to, to uh, yeah, maybe. I just want to um, interject really yeah. that part of the idea of getting such a diverse group together was we have experts together with beginners and if people um, are willing to serve as a resource to those people who are just starting off, especially in people in communities, if they have questions and want to ask somebody who's close to them, um, please identify yourselves to me as being ongoing resources beyond the term of this workshop um, so that we can let people know that you're willing to answer questions that they might feel um, they'll sound stupid if they ask you know, yeah. somebody who's not you. <laughs> so, um, and so, and I think that once we kind of start getting our hands on these materials, these questions are less abstract and it's literally, oh, I want to document this workshop. Here's this workbook that Amy put together. What is this? Is it a born digital? And so when you start having really specific examples, um, sometimes this makes a lot more sense, right? It really, really does. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have time to maybe walk through like one more media type, like maybe like an interview or just, just uh -huh. some of the basic stuff, just to see how we. So I don't think we. Um, so these are kind of built in right now, the templates, right? Those, those are the ones that have been completed. These are the ones that have been completed, mm -hmm. right? Basically, the tiles, the tiles with blocks were over there, already there, and the still image. Um, Do you download a, a, an image for this? Is it still image? Okay, yeah, so the still image. So you know how yesterday we were talking about digitize, and this is just one example for the still image. So yesterday, a whole, some folks went upstairs and we talked about file naming, digitizing items, that would be saved to your computer, to your USB, wherever your own personal archive exists, right? So what, what happens is you have access to that, you log into your Omeka site, and when it says, when you upload an item, you, you go through wherever you have that stuff saved. And, that's, and it pulls it from here. So even in those um, earlier examples of the, digit, of the different exhibits, remember I said, oh, and there's an item, and there's a postcard, and there's a bumper sticker. All of those items have to first be up, all of those images first are uploaded as an item, and then it pulls it to where you want it to be. So that's. Yeah, because like if I had my, if I wanted to add something out. Yeah, so, so if, if you had stuff that you guys digitized yesterday, yeah. then you can. I, would, I think this afternoon there's going to be some time for you to actually, you know, and even if it's not, maybe save some images over lunch from the computer, and then of course we'll delete them, but it'll get you seen the process of how this works. Yeah. So in the in the same folder with the handbook for the um, for the workshop, which I just lost. Here it is. Um, there's also another folder called more file photos. And these are photos that people made available on the internet. So if you wanted to download a photo, if you don't have an item of your own to work on, you are welcome to download these and we can create items and then we can just delete them at the end. Another thing that I wanted to go back to, and this is from the, sorry. Oh, the digitization workshop yesterday where we talked about kind of how you organize your stuff outside 
of Omeka, right? So I wanted to show you an example. Um, so this, oh, that's so small. This is my metadata um, worksheet for those photos that you just saw, the butterflies and the flowers. I just, I think they're pretty, so this is what, it, these are my examples that I use, right? Yeah. And then I haven't done all my research, so I don't know what they all are yet, but here's what I'm, how I'm organizing this, right? Because, as we recall from those long file names, right, they were putting all of this stuff in the file name. And we don't want to do that, right? We want a place where we keep all of the information about all of our files. And then over here, there's the file name, right? See how much simpler those are and how you could probably find the thing you were looking for pretty easily with that file name <coughs> versus the way the separate is this pulled from what you have imported? So this is my, this is me going out and quote unquote taking photographs, not really, I got them off the internet, and then I created the metadata, right? I put in here for each photo what I'm going to put in those fields when I get to Omega, okay? So then you're, are you copying and pasting, or are you...? Um, it depends, like, because they all have so a type of still them. image, I can paste that, right, through all of the fields. But because I don't even know necessarily what the picture is of, because the person, like on Flickr, people don't always, they don't put metadata, right? They just throw the picture up there, and then we're like, hmm. So I had to do research. And, and you can see I'm not done yet. <laughs> There's lots of blank spaces, right? And then I have to decide how I'm going to describe it. And then here's an example of a write statement. And that's just from the site where I got it, right? Because they just give their, I know she had an identifier. I made up my own identifier, right? Amy E. Winter, 001. <laughs> Right? I mean, that works. What you said, not to put in the No, say that louder. I thought you said yesterday not to put in the So an identifier generally is going to come from a larger organization. Like archives have items in a collection and they give them each a number for to help them find things. Right? Um, you as an individual might not want to bother with that, but I did it as an example to show you that you can. Take the power. You want an identifier? Make it up. I mean, like, yeah. really, though. Yeah. Are you suggesting that we also, commit in the community project, that should be one of our responsibilities to complete as a native? I would not presume. Yeah. However, <laughs> as an individual, I would certainly do this. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's a lot of work. It is yes. a ton of work. Yes. So, That's why they pay me the big bucks. I wonder if I could even show you. <laughs> so the template. Look on Lon's spreadsheet. Oh, do you have it on the internet somewhere? Margie can tell you that the Lon project was, yeah. it took yeah. hours, yeah. hours. This is only, I don't know, maybe 12 photographs. And the Lon had somewhere around 400. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it took her, what, weeks yes. to do this? Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah. so my question would be like this, maybe you have a, uh, each field you're tied, no, yeah. mm -hmm. for A is title, B, subject, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, probably part of a protocol should be this is what we're going to follow or we should follow. Or I mean, I think these are good questions that we should pose to everybody here, maybe even if Mimi or Shane wants to jump in. So I think what we're getting at now is kind of workflow. Right. And I think that's really kind of where we're headed with these discussions. And that is, you know, you can take your image, you can log into Omeka and you can fill in item by item. Or you can scan all of your stuff, create this really nice Excel sheet where you have the title and you've already and you got each cell from Omeka, right? You know you're gonna be asked those items and then you can just fill them on, you know, fill those items in as best you can on your home computer and then log into Omeka and upload a lot of things as once, cutting and I think it's workflow, right? Um, Shane and Mimi, whoever well, goes first. Make, I, I'm going to ask you all to consider.
consider this as a possibility for your organizations or your communities, which is an idea of doing both scanning and metadata bees, kind of like quilting bees, and get your communities together wherever you're going to do that so that you're all in one place and talking about these things or making these decisions and doing like a quilting bee. You're all there. You're all metadata and, and <laughs> Oh, it's a bird. Oh, I love it. So this is a possible solution. So uh, take that and run with it wherever you are and whatever, whoever you're doing this with. So that's a practical suggestion. So anyway. So just yeah. piggyback on that, uh, we were thinking along the same lines. Um, actually, that idea, Wikipedia does it a lot with the editathons, yeah. and um, they get uh, groups mm -hmm. together and have found that there's just a lot of people who yeah. like to do things together versus sitting. There's other people who yeah. like to sit at home alone, but a lot of people are more motivated if they're together. And the other motivator is food. So they mm -hmm. always will let you put in your budget for pizza and whatever it takes to attract uh, people. Um, but if we, what I'm thinking is agreeing on this as a template yes. is also really important for another goal of this, uh, you know, that we hope to see as follow through this workshop, which is, is involving interns, involving students, involving volunteers. So if you have a template, somebody picking up where somebody else yes. left off yes. is really critical because they can see how you did it, how the person before did it. So I would advocate strongly that we just adopt this with whatever modifications that people have ideas like, you forgot a column, you know. Yeah. Then, um, but if we, if we could just as a group reach consensus around, here's a template you can use when you do your, uh, yeah. you know, your community event or you're training a, um, an intern or a volunteer.
on the Manito site or are they searching on Google? Oh, I see. No, on the Manito site, because I was in the middle, I would say to go over it. And if someone put it in just without the uh, or just what it was, would it still pull it up? Yes, it will. Yep, it will. It will pull up any item that has that word in any of these fields. Now, on the fields for mine, I put an underscore between each word. Should I not do that on the title? On the, on the actual site? On the actual so, like field in the title page. field here? Yeah. No, this is this is text. So, this is different than the name of your file that you scan. That's where we don't want to use spaces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, this is just regular text. Um, because when it gets translated to the front end, it's what people are interacting and reading with. And so you right. Want it's this, like right? Yes. Buffalo right. Hunt. That's the so title. So that's the main page of right, the front end of this project. Two quick things. Um, for the creator, you could put down like the artist's name and the age range in there also. Um, <laughs> so... Um, again, I probably wouldn't. Uh -huh. um, there are there are controlled vocabularies for people, famous people, right? Uh -huh. And they're going to have decided that for a famous person, right? Like Richard Nixon. Uh -huh. They're going to decide how his name is going to be displayed. Okay. For a non-famous person, you're, you're, <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Okay, but, but if you put their, their when they were born and died in I that wouldn't. section, it would screw things up. It, I don't know that it would screw things up. I wouldn't but do might. it. I'd put their name, and then if you wanted to include their lifetime, I'd put that in the description. That's okay. me. Uh -huh. Okay, and then the other thing is under the subject, just so that people can talk about it after, I put an activist, and if you put an activist, there's a long list of things that come up. Look at that. Of all sorts of things. Cool. But I tried putting in some of the other words and it was... Yeah. yeah, for this, to get your search, try starting with one word. Thank you. Yeah. Just put two minutes. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll break for lunch five minutes early. The afternoon session starts at 1.15.